Okay, here I thought I'd make a quick video. I, I don't know if you can hear me very well because there's a lot of noise from this machine happening behind me. And I thought I'd demonstrate something here about um, indicating a part in for a setup that if you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but let me get down here, see how how these edges overhang the part. So you really just can't edge find this or even probe it. Although this machine doesn't have probing, so that's not really an option anyway. But I need to set the, the fixture offset on the, on the zero center, the G54 X and Y center on the center of the part. The Z is already set. I've already machined three of these parts. So that's already set, and so I don't have to adjust that. But I just thought I'd demonstrate how I find the center of this part with the edges. They're in the way. You can't do it with the edges the way they are. So what I do, and you could use this method probably for a, a lot of things, not just uh, just this situation, but I stick a dial indicator on in the on a tool holder, and I can you know I can rotate it and I adjust it more or less like that. And uh, we're going to use that to kind of as a, as an edge finder. First, I'm going to um, check that this part is actually straight in the vices. What I've found in this setup is that. Depending on how tight I tighten uh, each one of the vices, so I can get the it um kind of changes. If I it depends on which how I tighten the vice, it can tip the part just a little bit. So I'm I've been indicating it here. We're just going to run this up to some zero point on the indicator. Actually, I'm going to zero it over here. You can, you, that's barely out of view, but I'm zeroing the indicator. And then I'm going to run the part across to the other side. And you see, it's just a, it's about a thousandth and a half off. It's not really anything that would really cause a problem with this part, but just to get it straighter, I have found that if I loosen this vise just a little bit, it um, it more or less straightens the part out in there. I think that the way I have these vise jaws, the, the rear of the vise is the same. I've got them bolted on the outside, so it's tensioning these screws and maybe uh, maybe the screws on the other side are a little bit tighter, I don't know. So now that I've established that that's straight, I can come over here, and you see this indicator is, um, can, can go underneath the overhang. And what I do is I run this this probably isn't strictly necessary if the part is straight, but I run it up to the zero point. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to jog this in the x-axis in this case up until I hit close to my zero point on the indicator. Then I'm going to rotate the indicator in the spindle until I get my null position on the needle. And then I'm going to jog it up to zero. Okay, like that. And I'm sort of hand holding this. Now I've got to go over to the position screen, which is here. And I'm going to say X. I need to have it on the relative screen. I'm going to go X and then an origin. I'm going to zero that axis out, X axis. We're going to come back over here. So we're going to run the dial indicator. You could, you could probably do this by jogging up the spindle and everything, but I just do it this way so I don't change the Z height of anything. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I just do it this way. I've been doing it this way 
and rotate the, rotate the indicator. Don't touch the indicator, don't move it or anything. It's the same exact setting. Come back up to my Y, what formerly was my Y zero point. Is there. This, like I said, that's not super critical, except that if there's a slight inaccuracy in the part, this is sort of getting you more closer to center. I'm going to jog this up into where I get a reading on the indicator, rotate my spindle around to get the null position of the indicator, and then carefully jog back to my zero point. Now I haven't moved the indicator. It's important you don't disturb that indicator. Whatever setting you use on the other side of the part, you don't disturb it. So when you come back up to zero, it's kind of ch checking at the same diameter. The diameter doesn't matter where you set it. It's just that it has to not move between one side and the other. Now, I'm gonna have to pick up the camera again here. I'm gonna go over to the machine's display again. Okay, now that we got the camera repositioned, now we got 25.723, so I'm gonna take the calculator and just say 27, or 25, excuse me, 25, 25 point seven two three four divided by two. Okay, it's 12.8617. So on this machine, I can select X. So the X is kind of flashing here. And then I could sell it to 12.8617. I don't know if you can see that. 8617 is my uh, halfway point. And then I can set preset down here and instead of origin. And it puts that number, oop. Let me do that again. X, 12. 0.8617 preset. Okay, now that I got it right. And that puts me uh, my zero point in the center. This You could do this on a digital readout on a manual machine exactly the same way. That's basically what I'm doing here. So now, 12.8617, I'm going to um, put the camera back down there on the machine and I'm just gonna verify that that is a uh, you know, is correct, just to be sure. So here I'm gonna jog the machine. 12.8617, remember our number there. I'm gonna jog the machine over here. Rotate the spindle back around. Come back up to my Y zero point. In, now in theory, my Y zero point shouldn't change very much, but I've been checking it on all the parts because you know it's held in the vise the same as the last part, but I also check it just to make sure. So I get my null indicator and then uh, Carefully jog it up to oops, jog it up to zero. What was our number? Remember it? 12.8617. Let's look at it. Now we're at minus 12.8617. So this is a this is a way to very precisely find the center of a part. You could do this even if you didn't have the ledges, but I have these ledges overhanging the part before I machine this operation. And uh, it's, you know, you can't really probe. I mean, you could hold a block up there, I guess, and edge find it, but you would end up with some inaccuracies. Or if you had a magnetic thing, you could stick on each side and edge find it on both sides and then center it. But this way is a way to do it and in reality, it's, uh, it's very precise. And if you had a part even in a, in a vice, say on a Bridgeport mill, and you did this on both sides, and then you calculated where your actual part zero was gonna be from your center line and moved it, you would be very precisely finding the edge.
of the part this way instead of an edge finder. Edge finders are all right, but they're, they probably vary a thousandth of an inch or so, depending on your skill at using them and your edge finder itself, how good it is. But this will get you right on whatever, whatever you mic the length of that part and then you put it in the center. And then if you had to set your part zero on the corner over there, you could then, you know, whichever where you put it, add or subtract the number to your offset and set it over there. So I'm gonna check the um, Y zero here just cause I've been doing that on all the parts. And we're gonna jog the part in the Y axis back here. Let me kind of set this, okay. I'm gonna jog it back. Got the, I've got the magnetic base stuck to the table of the machine. You can see it right here. And it's kind of awkward. I'm gonna jog it over to my X0. There again, it, if your part's perfectly straight in the vise, it doesn't really matter if you're at the zero point, but I've just been doing it that way for these parts. And then I'm gonna jog up until I get a reading on the indicator, rotate my spindle to get my null reading on the dial, and then jog this thing up to zero. And I'm gonna to go to the control and I'm gonna set my Y axis at the origin origin my y-axis that sets it on a CNC machine that kind of sets this uh, relative display at zero. This doesn't affect, by the way, your, um, your actual fixture offset. It's just a display you can use to do this on a CNC machine. Most all, most all CNC machines have a display of this sort somewhere in the control. Then I'm gonna jog over here and do the same thing I just did in the x-axis. I'm gonna set myself over to the zero point here. Now I'm just using this one inch travel indicator. If you were running out of travel range in, in your X or Y, you might have to set it up slightly different with your indicator. Okay, there's my zero point. I gotta get up here on the machine. Might be messing up the lighting and everything here, but it's, it's kind of a awkward. In fact, you can't even, you probably can't even see the dial indicator like that. Let me, uh, maybe. It's kind of a little bit hard to see the indicator here, but I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. So, rotate the spindle to get the null reading. Put it in the fine jog rate. Jog it up there, like that. Okay, here we are back at the control. You see there's 21.8224. So we're gonna take that clear. 21.8224 divided by two brings us to the center line, which is, you can see that is a 10.9112. So we're gonna say Y, we'll select the Y key here. See how the Y is flashing, 10.9112 preset, okay. Um, if you were on the minus side, of course you had to put minus 10 point, but we're on the plus side of the Y axis here, so that's, that's what it's set at for this particular thing. Now, here again, I'm gonna double check that just to be sure. So I'm gonna jog back over here. Now remember, it's absolutely critical that you don't disturb this dial indicator as far as how it's mounted on your, uh, your uh, tool holder or anything. I'm gonna come back over here. 
back up to the X0 point in this case. It's right there. And then I'm going to jog up to my same zero reading on my indicator. Just right. I mean, it's kind of kind of the way I'm looking at this. There's a parallax error, but it, that's pretty close. And it's 10, 10.911. Well, we're plenty accurate enough there. Now, I'm going to, um, again, jog this thing. Let me move it back. Over. I'm going to actually physically jog it to the X and Y zero point now. So back that away. Go up in Z. Get out of the way. I'm going to put it at X and Y zero of what I just set on this uh, re relative display. Okay, you gotta gotta not forget to do this, of course. And so there's, there's I'm at X and Y zero. Now I got to go over here to my offset display. And you see, I'm a little bit off from the last part. Actually, just setting that on the vise, it amazes me. I put it within two thousandths of where the other one was. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to add minus point oh oh two six plus to bring that to zero. I'm going to go down to the Y, although it's within a tenth, but minus 0 0.0001 plus to bring it to the zero. Now we set the X and Y zero very precisely on the center of this part with those overhangs when we couldn't use an edge finder or any kind of or any kind of probing or anything like that. So that's a simple way but you may not have thought of it before when you don't have uh, the ability to actually edge find or probe the, the sides of the part, you can do it in this manner. Thought that would be worth showing. Make a quick video of it here just to show you how I do this kind of a thing.